Uh, good afternoon. Hope everybody's uh, family's well. Hope you guys are doing good. Um, feels good bit getting back in the win column. I thought our guys did a heck of a job uh, of playing the game the way it should be in the second half. But our attitude, our mindset right now is to make sure that we're learning this week how to put consistent and disciplined behavior on tape on a consistent basis. So that's the mindset. That's the thought process. That's what we want to do, and that's the goal, getting, uh, taking us into this week, into Sunday. With that said, I'm all ears. Hey, uh, Eric, given that we're talking to Travis here in a little bit, mm -hmm. what does he do on third down that makes him so special in, in getting open and being available to the quarterback? Kels is a unique individual, and the thing about it, these tight ends are built so different. He's so athletic, but he also has a great understanding of the game. With that said, him and Pat have an unbelievable chemistry together. So they're seeing things and making things happen, you know, uh, before it even takes place. So the thing that makes him unique is that Kels has a, a great vision and a feel for the game. He's played the quarterback position. He understands coverages, and he knows exactly where he needs to be in order to get open and for uh, Pat to find him when the time is right. Yeah, we, we've seen it with Travis, you know, especially the last few weeks. You know, sometimes the injuries can pile up. I mean, guys are going after him and playing him all the time. Where does he rank? I mean, as far as the, the physical, you know, nature, just his, his toughness, where does he kind of rank him the players he's had? You know what? Uh, obviously, he, he, I'll say this. Trav is a tough, smart, hard-nosed football player, okay? Now, ideally, you would like him to play more physical, we ask him to do so much. We mentally exhaust him. So by the end of the game, you'll see him doing these motions. He's walking around, trying to make sure he can get himself set. But the thing I love about Trav is this. He's going to give you all that he has, and that's all that matters. And the thing about it, you know when needed, he's going to find a way to get it done. Eric, do you believe that every team – year to year needs to sort of create its own identity. I mean, you've got a lot of the same guys back, so it seems like you, you could try and replicate what you did the past couple of years. But what is the process of, of this team being its own unique feature? You know what, and I think, and not to debate you, but I think each year every team is different because of the added new pieces. And you have to understand, we have to learn how to grow together. We have a lot of different players that are contributing. I mean, you think about the O-line, you know. For the most part, at one point in time, that whole old line, there was five different starters up front. And so that's, that's an addition. So these guys are learning us. On top of that, our guys are learning how to play together. And I think with that said, the chemistry has to be developed, and these guys got to get a feel for who they are. So the thing that we need to continue to understand is, you know, as long as we're being accountable and as long as we're doing things the right way, these guys will grow together, and I think the season will write his own story in a positive way. So because of that, because of the changes, does it take a little while for each group to develop its own identity? Of course, you know, and it does. And the thing about it is guys need to make sure that they always are on the same page. And that's what I was just talking about. It's about being consistent and disciplined in everything that you do. It's about maintaining the focus. It's about making sure that you understand all the little nuances that are required for you to go out and execute, execute this play. And then you got to line up in the huddle, get the next information about the next play, and then go do it all again. So yes, it takes time. So with that said, you know, these guys have been together now. Hell, we're going into, what is this, week seven or eight? And it's time for that to start taking over. I think it's still only been a month. I know that you guys are trying to get Josh Gordon more involved. What's the greatest obstacle to, to him getting a little bit more right now? Uh, probably us as coaches. We just need to make sure we're putting him out there and, and getting him, you know, uh, uh, comfortable out there as a player and making sure that he's understanding exactly what's going on. But the only way he's going to learn is to go out there and make a, a mistake every now and then. And that's okay because if he does make a mistake, I guarantee you he won't repeat that mistake. But that kid has been working his tail off. The thing I'll say this again, we just need to make sure we're getting him more involved. Joe has done a great job with him. He's been practicing his tail off, and it's just up to us to make sure we get him the necessary reps that he needs on game day. 
I had a scenario question for you. The Bills and Titans on Monday night, fourth and one, uh, they opted to go for it instead of kicking the field goal. What do you think the likelihood is that maybe you guys would take the same approach in, in that scenario? <laughs> you know what? No comment right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday, uh, what did you see from him? Did he give you the production that you expected? You know what, Daryl was Daryl, and I say, and I say that in the most positive, uplifting way. You know, Daryl is a kid who's been around us for a number of years. Uh, he's he's a kid that just plays hard. He does everything the right way. He's not gonna blow you away with with numbers. But the thing that I appreciate about Daryl, Daryl runs hard. All right, he picks up the blitzes when necessary. On top of that, he has great hands out of the backfield. And so that's all we can ask of him. And then, then on top of that, he's a leader in the room. And so with all that said, he understands what's important. He's also been around for, with us with all this great deal of success. And he wants to make sure when given an opportunity that he's doing his part and being accountable to his teammates. And I thought he did a heck of a job. Was there any drop off between Daryl and Clyde? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, they're two different players. And you never want to compare players. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters, who's ever in that game, we're counting on that individual all right, to play up to the level that's going to help us to achieve the victory. Eric, um, we've seen big workloads from time to time with Darrell, but not consistently. If that's mm -hmm. how you guys choose to use him this week, next week, how, how's he going to respond? Does he know that job gets harder as the weeks go on? Oh, yeah. That, that bullseye is on you. Oh, he yeah. Know yeah. About you? He knows that. How, how, how do you feel like he's going to handle that part of it? You know what? I, I'm sorry for cutting you off. I think he understands because he's been here, okay? He's seen our guys take care of their bodies and understand the grueling process that it is when you're a starter. So you have to, you have to develop a routine. You got to come in on Monday, do whatever you need to do in the weight room on Monday. You need to get in that training room, make sure you're taking care of your body. You also got to make sure you're taking in the proper nutrition because on Mondays, it's a race to get back you know, uh, healthy and sound for practice on Wednesday. And so he understands exactly what, it, what that needs to be, that process is like. But I'm looking forward to watching him grow, you know, through this opportunity. Eric, with the scramble play that Patrick had where it didn't count, but obviously scrambling to his right, throwing across his body to Tyree, um, can you share your perspective of what it was like to watch that play in the moment and if you learned anything in rewatching it on film? You know what, it, it's, it's, this probably sounds bad, but being here and seeing things that they do in practice and watching some of the things that have taken place on game day, you should be in awe of everything. But these guys are professionals and, and they, they have a way of making things happen, making special plays happen. And so, and I don't want to take anything away from it. They have a unique chemistry in what they do. On top of that, these guys are about as, as talented as any players that I've ever been around. So when it comes down to making a play, these guys are going to make sure that they're where they need to be, all right, when Pat starts to scramble. And on top of that, Pat trusts them, you know, enough to make sure that they can be in the right location to make it happen. So it, it was a unique opportunity. Unfortunately, it didn't count just like you said. But the sad part, I don't want to sound like I'm taking it for granted. We see that stuff a lot. <laughs> When you're throwing something across your body at the numbers, like that isn't a fundamental like football coaching point. Like, how do you manage like letting Pat do that and kind of giving him tips? Like, maybe that isn't necessarily the best way to go about it. I don't know if you remember, he made a left-handed pass a few years ago. <laughs> so, I don't think there's a number of things that's <laughs> very uh, not natural for Pat. The thing that you don't want to do, you don't want to take the fun out of the game. Okay. Yes, we do want to make sure we're managing all the little things that we should be doing the right way. Obviously, Pat talked about what took place with, with, uh, with the interception last week. That's uncharacteristic of him. That should not happen. But we don't want these guys not to allow themselves to show their personalities. They are who they are, okay? That's what makes them fun. That's when we're having our success, when those guys have an opportunity to put their, uh, their personalities on display and go out there and play hard and play for each other for 60 consecutive minutes. You mentioned earlier you've got the full new look offensive line, but then obviously Mike Rimmer has got the opportunity last week. What do you gain by having him at right tackle? Okay. Here's what you gain. You gain uh, uh, a veteran who's been in the league for a number of years. On top of that, 
Mike Remus has been with us now for a few years, and he understands the system. There's also something that takes place up front. Those guys got to do a great job of over-communicating with one another. And so with Remus in there, he's going to help Trey to get better because now he's over-communicating the necessary information, you know, uh, back and forth to each other. And the best thing about that is now Lucas has an opportunity to sit and observe and watch and practice watching how Rimmers is handling certain situations that present itself. I think it's a great opportunity for Rimmers, but on top of that too is teaching Lucas, all right, all the ins and outs on how to become a better professional. Was that a matter of information overload for Lucas over these last few weeks? You know what, I, I, it's, it's, you probably would have to ask Coach Heck that, that question. I know one thing, Lucas played his tail off, okay? And Lucas is gonna be a great player here. And the thing that we wanted to make sure is that we're putting our guys in the right situations to be successful. And I know right now this is the right situation for both of them, and it's going to help us as a team moving forward. Thanks, everybody. All right, thank you, guys.